I'm John Noser. And I'm Beth Hiley. And we are here to do a rules explanation video for civilization using the advanced civilization expansion and rule set. In this video, part two, we are going to be doing a detailed overview of the calamities and the civilization advancement cards. If you're looking for a more general overview, namely how to set up the game and the overview of a turn, then you want to check out part one with me on our Board Game Geek TV channel on YouTube. So now you can join me in an exploration of all those bad calamities that are going to make your civilization crumble to the ground. The calamities are a big reason why people either love this game or hate this game. There are two types. Tradable calamities which have black writing, and non-tradable calamities, which have non-tradable written on them and are in red. Obviously, the non-tradable calamities cannot be traded during the trade phase, while the other ones can. No one player can have the effects of two calamities hit them as the primary victim in one turn. If you have more than two calamities, you shuffle them up and you randomly choose two that will affect you. So let's go see what the calamities do. In the level two non-tradable calamity, volcanic eruption or earthquake, the primary victim first determines whether they have a city on a volcano. The volcanoes are these white triangles. Volcanoes will affect any area that they are completely in, or in this case, that they straddle. So this volcano will affect this, both of these areas, and this volcano will affect both of these areas. Italy, red, is the primary victim in this situation. The city that, they will, that will be eliminated is determined by, the vo by which volcano will do the most damage. So in this situation, two cities will loss, one of Illyria's and one of Italy's, and that's more damage than just a city and a guy, so that is the volcano that will erupt. Both cities are elim eliminated. Boats are not affected by vo volcanoes. If the primary victim does not have a city on a volcano, so let's say the primary victim in this situation is Africa down here, they will choose a city that will be destroyed and eliminated. The choice is really actually not up to them. It's the city that will do the most damage because there are secondary um, victims. The secondary uh, victim will be any opposing civilization or any other civilization that's connected or adjacent to the city that's hit by the earthquake. So in this situation, this city and this city are adjacent. Even though it's across the water, they are still adjacent. So this city will be eliminated and the secondary city for the, for the earthquake will be just reduced and it won't be eliminated. So Italy will have two men there. Now engineering will mitigate the circumstances of the earthquake, but not of the volcano. So if you have engineering and you are the primary victim, instead of getting your city reduced in an earthquake, it, I'm sorry, instead of getting your city eliminated in an earthquake, it will just be reduced. So Africa would still have three men there. If you were the secondary victim and you were hit by an earthquake, your city's fine and it does not get reduced. And that is volcanic eruption and earth or earthquake. The level two tradable calamity is treachery. The primary victim loses one city and it is replaced by a city of the player who traded him that card. So let's say the scenario is Italy is the primary victim. The Africa player traded him the card, so the African player gets to decide what city he's going to take over. He then removes the Italian city and replaces one of his own. If the situation is that Africa already has nine, of, nine cities on the board and has none left in stock, then he just will choose one to remove and eliminate. If Italy is the primary victim, and the card was not traded to them, so they receive the card from the commodity deck, then 
they choose a city and it is reduced. There are no civilization advancement or technology cards that reduce the effect of treachery. We've zoomed our view out a little bit to talk about a calamity with a little more widespread effect. The level 3 non-tradable calamity, Famine. The primary victim in Famine loses 10 unit points. In this case, it will be Italy. Italy then will just instruct the other players to lose 20 unit points, with no more than one person losing 8 unit points. So in this case, Italy will tell Illyria, yellow, to lose 8 unit points, Africa Brown to lose 6, Crete Green to lose 4, and Asia Orange to lose 2. Now the civilization advancement pottery can mitigate the effects. If you have pottery and can trade in a grain commodity card, you can prevent up to 4 unit points from being taken from the board. You can trade as many grain cards as you have and every grain card will be the four will be four points less that you'll take from the board. And that's them. The level three tradable calamity is superstition. If you are the primary victim of superstition you will reduce three cities. So Italy is our primary victim so they will reduce three of their cities. They get to choose which three cities they reduce. There are a few civilization advancement cards that actually reduce the effects of superstition. If you have mysticism, you will only have to reduce two of your cities. If you hold deism, you will only have to reduce one of your cities. And if you hold enlightenment, you will have to actually reduce none of your cities, and superstition does not affect you. Now these effects do not add together, so if you have both deism and mysticism, you are not immune to superstition. The only civilization advancement card that will help you is the one that gives you the greatest benefit. So if you have deism, mysticism won't do anything more than what deism is already doing for you. And that is superstition. The level 4 non-tradable calamity is Civil War. Civil War is one of the most devastating calamities in the game. One of the first things you do with Civil War is actually determine who the beneficiary is. The beneficiary is the player with the most units in stock, with, five, with cities counting as 5 units. If the primary victim would be the beneficiary, the Civil War actually does not happen. If the primary victim is not the beneficiary, then they start by flipping over 15 units of their civilization to start creating what we're going to call the white faction. After they flip over 15 units, then the beneficiary will flip over 20 unit points. This is going to complete the white faction. What is remaining is going to be the red faction. So in this situation, only one city is remaining, and that is the red faction. Boats do not count towards either faction and will always be in control of the primary victim after the Civil War is over. Now, once the two factions have been created, the primary victim has a decision to, decide to <laughs> play one or the other faction. So in this situation, the decision is not very difficult, and Italy will play the white faction. The beneficiary then replaces the non-chosen faction units with some of their own and will take control of that faction by doing that. Let's take a look at the civilization advances that affect civil war. If the primary victim holds music, in addition to the original 15 unit points they get to flip over, they will get to flip over an additional five. If they have drama and poetry, they will get five additional unit points to flip over, and if they have democracy, they get a 10 additional. So, if they have all three, they can flip over 35 units. 15 for the original, 5 for music, 
five for drama and poetry, and ten for democracy. Now, if they have philosophy, music, drama and poetry, and democracy are ignored. If the primary victim holds philosophy, they flip over no unit points. The beneficiary only flips over 15 unit points, and the resulting two factions is what the primary victim is going to have to choose from. Now, military adds a little wrinkle at the end after the factions have been chosen. So let's get back to our example here where we have the white faction and the red faction. After the factions have been chosen, military states that they fight with each other, and each side has to lose five unit points. Those five unit points are lost somewhere where the two factions border each other. So in this situation, they only border each other here. And in this situation, it's very convenient because each a city is worth five unit points and each faction will lose a city. The primary victim will then choose between the remaining factions. The level four tradable calamity is slave revolt. In slave revolt, the primary victim turns over 15 of their units and then checks to see if they have enough units to support their cities. Again, Italy is our primary victim. And remember, you need two units to be able to support each of your cities. So 15 units is actually all of the units that Italy has on the board. So Italy right now is unable to support any of their cities. In this situation, they will decide which cities to reduce to see if they're able to support cities. So let's take a look how this works. They will reduce this city here and get two units on the board. So now they are able to support one city. Still, they have four on the board, so that's not enough. They will reduce this city and get one person on the board. So now they're able to support still only one city because they only have three people. Still not enough. So they will reduce this city and now they have enough to support the two cities that are still on the board. And that is the end of the slave revolt. There are two civilization advances that affect slave revolt. Mining, which makes it worse, and it will be an additional five units that wouldn't be able to support. So it would be 20. And enlightenment, which actually reduces the effect by five. So there would only be 10. If a player both has mining and enlightenment, the effects are canceled out. And again, it's the original 15 units that get turned over. The level five non-tradable calamity is blood. The primary victim of flood loses 17 points for on a floodplain. The floodplain are these dark areas that are on the board. Secondary victims that are on that same floodplain lose up to 10 points each. So poor Italy gets hit with a flood, but this time it's not too bad. They will lose these two men and Illyria will lose these two men. Now in another example, let's say Illyria gets hit by the flood. Since they have the same amount of units on both floodplains, they get to choose which floodplain gets hit. So they're going to choose this one because Asia will lose both their city and these two men. Now, if the city was actually on this city spot and not this one, the city would not be affected. Only city squares that are white are considered on the floodplain. Though with only units in this area, they are considered on the floodplain and they are lost. If a civilization has no units on a floodplain, let's take Africa, they would lose a coastal city. Pretty simple. Now, if you have engineering, you cannot lose more than seven unit points to a flood, whether you're the primary or secondary victim. If you have engineering and you are not on a floodplain, then the city that would be normally destroyed or eliminated is only reduced. The level five tradable calamity is barbarian hordes. In Barbarian Hordes, you will take 15 tokens of one of the colors that is not playing. So in this situation, it will be Assyria. 
they will be our barbarians. You will place them in one of the areas that the primary victim, you guessed it, Italy, normally would start in. So in this situation, you will choose the area that will do the most damage, the city. You do a normal combat, and Italy loses the city. You then drop off the amount of units that can, can be sustained in that area, which is one. And then the barbarian hordes move to the next area that will do the most damage to Italy, the primary victim. You will not look beyond the next area. It might be more damage to go down that way and try to sack that city, but because this has more people in it, the barbarian hordes are going to go this way. So they move in. There's another combat. And they drop off their people. Again, they will move in. And there's a combat. And then they are done. The combat is over. There's enough land there to support all four of those players and that the barbarian hordes are done. Now the barbarian horde tokens do not move, they do not grow in population, and they cannot be chosen as a secondary victim. There are no cards that modify barbarian hordes other than the cards that will help you in combat, such as metalworking. In addition, Crete, because they are an island, are immune to barbarian hordes, and if they get it, nothing happens. If there's ever a time where there is a tie between which area to go into, the player that traded the barbarian hordes to the primary victim will make those decisions. If no player traded the barbarian hordes, the actual person who has the most in stock will uh, make the decisions. And that is Barbarian Hordes. The level six tradable calamity is Epidemic. Epidemic is very similar to Famine. Though in Epidemic, the primary victim loses 16 unit points and assigns 25 unit points to other players with no player receiving more than 10 unit points. Our primary victim, of course, is Italy. So they will lose 16 unit points. Now, also unlike Famine, you cannot totally depopulate an area. So if you're taking a city off the board, you will have to have one person remain, and it only counts as four unit points as of uh, casualties. So in this case, that's Italy's 16 points. We're going to give 10 to Illyria, 10 to Crete, and then five to Africa. While my lovely hand assistant is taking off the pieces, the civilization advance cards that affect Epidemic is medicine and road building. If you're the primary victim, medicine saves eight unit points. And if you're the secondary victim, it saves five unit points. For road building, you get an additional five unit points of loss whether you're the primary or secondary victim. The level seven tradable calamity is civil disorder. In civil disorder, the primary victim reduces all but three of their cities. So Italy, our primary victim, surprise, surprise, reduces all but three of their cities. Now there are a number of civilization advances that affect civil disorder music, drama and poetry, law, and democracy all reduce the number of cities that the primary victim has to reduce by one. So if you have all four of those, you will only have to reduce down to seven cities. Now military and road building aggravate civil disorder and it will increase by one. And all those effects are cumulative. So if you have all of those civilization advances, you will be reducing down to five cities. And that's civil disorder. Iconoclasm and heresy is the level eight tradable calamity. In Iconoclasm and heresy, the primary victim reduces four of their cities. 
Poor Italy, it's going to hit them pretty hard since they only have five cities. But there are secondary victims, and the primary victim gets to choose two cities belonging to other players to reduce. Now, the player that traded iconic, Iconoclasm and Heresy to the primary victim cannot be a secondary victim. So Illyria is going to reduce one city, and Africa is going to reduce one city. Now, there are quite a few civilization advances that affect Iconoclasm and Heresy. Philosophy and law reduce the number of cities you need to reduce by one. Theology reduces it by three. Monotheism and road building increase it by one each. Now, a secondary victim that holds philosophy may not lose more than one city. And a secondary victim that holds theology cannot be chosen as a secondary victim. We're going to look at the level 9 tradable calamity, piracy. Arg. The primary victim in piracy loses two coastal cities. Those cities are chosen by the player that traded him that calamity. Those cities are then replaced by pirate cities. Again, you can use one of the colors of one of the civs that are not playing, so we're going to use Assyria again. The primary victim, poor Italy, then gets to choose two cities of other players that get turned into pirate cities also. No more than one city per, per player can be turned. So in this situation, Italy is going to choose Illyria and Africa to lose cities. There are no civilization advancement cards that mitigate piracy. The pirate cities in future turns do not need to be supported and you do not get a commodity card when you eventually take down and conquer the city. I'm going to now briefly go over some effects of some of the civilization advances. Now I will not mention how they affect calamities or what bonus points they give for buying future civ advances. The calamity effects will be reviewed during the calamities and for the discounts there is a very excellent sheet that's in the back of the advanced civ rulebook which allows you to figure out what um, bonuses you get for future purchases. With metalworking you have an advantage in battle. If you have metalworking and your opponent does not, your opponent will remove their units first. Here are two battles to show what happens if players are tied and then what happens if the player with metalworking is outnumbered. If they're tied and if they're outnumbered If both players have metal working, it is resolved the normal way. With road building, a player will be able to move two areas when moving their units. A player will not be able to move through an area with opposing units, barbarians, or pirate cities. With engineering, assaulting cities is, effect, is changed. Engineering affects assaulting cities. If you have engineering and you're assaulting a, a city, that city during combat is only reduced to five tokens instead of six, and therefore you can take the city with only six units. If you are defending and you have engineering, a player needs eight units to take down your city because your city will be reduced into seven people during combat. If both players have engineering, that effect is canceled. Mining allows you to trade in sets of iron, bronze, silver, gems, and gold for one more than you would normally have. 
So in this situation, if you only have one iron and you're trading it in, you can actually trade it in for eight and not two. You, however, cannot trade in more than the maximum value. So if you had all the gold, all five, you would not be able to trade it in for more than 225, even though you have mining. With architecture, you're allowed to pay half of a city cost from your treasury. So in this situation, you can take three units off the board. You would then take three of your treasury tokens and put them back in stock, and then you would be able to find a city, found a city. That includes wilderness cities, and you can take up to six treasury to pay for that and have six units on the board. Agriculture increases a population in an area by one. In this situation, Illyria has agriculture and they, have, they can have three people in this area instead of two. Three in this area, two in this area. Now, if there is combat in that area, say in this situation, and both players do not have agriculture, in this case, Italy does not, the effective support for that area is down to two again. So in this situation, you will remove until you have only two left. With astronomy, ships can move open seas. Open sea areas are areas that are just bordered by other sea territories. So this would be an open sea area. This would be an open sea area. This down here would be an open sea area. So in this situation, one, two, three, four. Astronomy and cloth making can be combined and you would be able to move over open sea areas and move five. If a player has monotheism, they get a special ability after calamities are resolved. They can convert one area that they have units next to. In converting, they get to replace an opponent's units with one of their own, including cities, but not including ships. In this case, Italy is converting Illyria. Now, if Illyria also has monotheism, they are immune. They are also immune if they own theology. Coinage allows you to adjust your tax rate. Instead of taxing two per city, a civilization can decide to tax three, two, or one per city. It does have to be uniform. All cities have to tax at three, two, or one. In this situation, Egypt is lucky they have coinage. Since they have four cities on the board and only five people in stock, they can lower their tax rate to one per city and avoid revolt. It's worth mentioning what military does, even though there's really no way to represent it on the board. If you have military, you will go last in your movement phase regardless of where you end up on AST order. It is worth mentioning what military does, even though it's not very easy to represent on the board. With military, you will go last, regardless of what your population is. If two people have military, they will go last. It is worth mentioning what military does, even though it's not very easy to represent on the board. If you have military, you will go last in the movement, regardless of your population. If two people have military, they will go after everybody else, and they will be their population will decide who goes first.
Democracy allows civilizations to avoid revolt even though they cannot pay their taxes. In this situation, Egypt has four cities on the board and only three in stock to pay their taxes. Now, with democracy, they don't have to worry about giving away their cities because they are immune to tax revolt. and Advancement Civilization cards in Advanced Civ. Hopefully when you play Advanced Civ, your game will go a little bit better than Port Italy's did in our example. And if you'd like to check out Part 1 of our Advanced Civ tutorial, or other tutorials from classic games or things that are new this year, then you can check out our YouTube channel at Board Game Geek TV. All one word. And we hope to see you there. Normally that doesn't happen during a famine. <laughs> it's true. And that was a review of all the calamities in most of them. <laughs> you just burp in the middle of that. <laughs> no, I didn't burp. I just got tongue-tied. Uh, okay. Civilization advancement... Hi, my name is Beth Hiley. And I'm John Noser. Did you forget your name? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>